Thanks for joining me. This is Danny, and welcome back to my Real Tech series, episode number 37, and the third episode in which we are playing Pneumaticraft. So in the last episode, we refined oil and we got set up to make plastics on the pathway toward advanced pressure. And today we're going to continue on that pathway by setting up assembly machines and going through the complicated process of assembling the PCBs required for those machines. And then we're going to get into advanced pressure. So we're working toward this unassembled PCB right now. So we need to make an empty PCB. In order to make an empty PCB, we need a compressed iron ingot and a green plastic in the pressure chamber. Now, we're going to have to make, in order to do our assembly thing, so I think we need four. So we're going to make four green plastic. So we just go in here and we click there and we get a green plastic. You can see it consumed a little bit of green dye and it also consumed a little bit of liquid plastic. So now that we're getting into more complicated recipes, we're going to run into a little bit of a problem with our current setup. So if I put one of each of these in here, which is supposed to make our PCB for us, um, what's going to happen is before it's able to get all the ingredients in there and compress them into the PCB, it's going to end up dropping them out. Um, here. <laughs> so it's not going to craft them for us. Um, so what I've done is actually put a hopper duct here in order to make it easier for us to access um, the filter under here without having to break and replace the hopper over and over again. Um, so what we can do is we can set up item filters. Now obviously we don't have the item to throw in here, but what we can do is we can change the way the filter works by setting it to like a creative tab or an item name. Um, or just like the item name contains. So we're making a PCB. So we can just say if the item name contains PCB, then let it through, otherwise don't. So in that case, we can throw those in there. And that green dye is just gonna sit there, or that green plastic is just gonna sit there. And you can just see a PCB appeared, and now it is dropped being pulled out. And there we have it, hooray! So what's nice about this is we can just dump all the ingredients in there right away, our three of each, and then we'll end up with our four PCBs. In order for the empty PCB to be useful for us, we are going to have to etch a circuit onto it. And since we don't have our assembly machines, we'll have to do this with using a UV light box in order to prepare it to be etched in acid. And that light box requires a PCB blueprint, and there are only two places we can get it. We can get it from a mechanic villager. These guys don't generally spawn in the world. You take a vanilla villager and you put one in a pressure chamber. <laughs> Obviously, it would have to be a larger pressure chamber than this one. Uh, <laughs> that's how you do that. Um, the easier way is to make an Amadron tablet. So an Amadron tablet is kind of a trading tablet that allows you to purchase things on the Amadron network. It's actually pretty cool. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do next. Amadron. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gray and <clears throat> excuse me, and four red plastic. So we can go in here and select gray seven times. And then red. Better than villagers. So I now have my Amaz Amadron tablet. But of course, before we can use it, we do have to give it pressure. It says not enough pressure. So we're gonna stick it in here for a little bit. And we won't need a whole lot of pressure, so I'll just let, let that go for a little bit. <clears throat> um, in the meantime, I'm going to set up a mailbox outside. <laughs> so we just needed some kind of an inventory out there. Oh, that is not, it is in there, okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we do with our Amadron tablet is we right click on an inventory, um, or shift right click rather, and you can say, see that item providing location has been set. So this is our item providing location. That's basically like our mailbox now um, for ordering things on Amadron. So <laughs> what we're going to do is, well, first of all, w when we right click on the Amadron tablet now, we can see that we have all these things that we can purchase. And this is what it costs. This is what we get. This is what we want right here. The PCB blueprint, it requires eight emeralds. Um, there's a few other things we'll be buying in the future as well. Okay. So you can actually add custom trades to this so that you can set up trades with other people if you're working on a server. Um, okay, oh boy, we do not have many emeralds. I may have to go <laughs> get some emeralds, oh boy. Or actually, we can get emeralds through the uh, Amadron network too. 
because it's kind of like a villager network. So I'm going to throw those emeralds in there. Um, and now when we open this up, we're going to see green for the things that we actually can purchase right now. So ooh, we can get emeralds for rotten flesh. I, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I threw the rotten flesh in there. <laughs> so now when we open up our Amadron tablet, um, so we can right click or I'm sorry, right click um, to add this to our order. If we right click again, it'll add two. However, we don't have enough. Okay, we're out of items to sell. We don't have enough emeralds. Um, down here, <laughs> we can do this. Okay, so I can sell three sets. It's actually, it's a lot of rotten flesh. I mean, a villager would probably give us a better deal, but that's fine. You can see we can get oak saplings. <laughs> Some of these trades are um, random and they will appear or disappear. I'm gonna get 16 for an emerald. Nice, okay. I wonder if it'll let me, no it won't, okay. So now we, we place our order and what's gonna happen is drones are going to appear. So first, a set of drones are going to come because we did two different things. We have two drones. One of them is going to grab the emeralds, the other is grabbing the rotten flesh. And then they're going to go off and just kind of despawn. Um, and then later on, some other drones are going to come back and bring our items that we purchased <laughs> and stick them in our mailbox. <laughs> so there we have it. So it gave us two emeralds, or was it three? It might have been three and this pcb blueprint hooray and you're done <laughs> are you sure <laughs> wait you're not really <laughs> use the amadron tablet to order a pcb blueprint <clears throat> okay so now we have the pcb blueprint i can make the uv light box and this mod is eating my iron so bad <laughs> I have gone through stacks of iron already. Um, so the UV light box, it takes pressure. You give it a PCB and it will um, expose it to UV light. <laughs> and in doing so, it will increase the etch success chance. So we may as well just leave this thing sit in here until it's up to 100%. Um, if you really want to take a risk and you're kind of in a hurry, um, you could just let it get up to like, you know, I don't know, 60, 70%. If it fails, it will become a failed PCB. So if it's only like, you know, if we grab this thing and threw it in the etch stuff now, um, it would probably fail. And then we, we could just throw it in a furnace to get the empty PCB back and then start th the process all over again. <laughs> so while we're waiting for that, uh, we, we're going to make this etch, etching acid. This is some nasty stuff but it's a necessary evil. So we're going to, in the pressure chamber, we're going to put all these things, all the stuff in there. And little by little, it'll be placed inside the pressure, pressure chamber. Um, I believe we can, yeah, we can speed this interface up with a speed upgrade so that this sort of stuff doesn't take quite so long. In fact, I'm going to steal the speed upgrades out of this for now and just throw them in here just so that this goes a little bit faster. Yeah, that's... Oh, it got stuck. Uh-oh. Oh, we froze. Okay. So you can see it opens the outside door, then it opens the inside door. That's how these things prevent too much pressure from being released. Oh, yeah, that's much faster. That's nice. So all that stuff is just sitting in there. <laughs> But eventually it will be all combined into a single bucket. Yay! <laughs> okay. So now I'm just going to get rid of that filter and then it'll end up down here. Oh, I may as well take that too. Whoops. <clears throat> Etching acid bucket. Okay, so this is probably done. Advancement made. Don't spill it on your shirt. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's still going. Wow. Okay. It seemed like it started out really fast, but it seems like it's slowing down. So I'm just going to dump this over here. Now this is temporary because once we get our um, assembly machine set up, we're not going to need this etching acid anymore. So I'm just going to dump that down there. And now we're going to wait. Oh, <laughs> this takes so long. So while we're waiting for this, uh, let's let's do another order on Amadron. <laughs> let's place another Amadron order um, because we are going to need eventually the laser program drill actually we're gonna need both of these um or laser program we're gonna need the drill program eventually as well uh but right now we only have enough emeralds for one and we're gonna need the laser one first so i'm gonna order that we'll say place order and this time just one drone will come and 
get our payment. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it's way better than villagers, right? <clears throat> it's better than Amazon too. Same day delivery. You don't even have to pay for Prime or anything. There it is. And you can even see the item. Like the item renders while it's carrying it. That's really cool. All right, right. there's our assembly program laser. Hooray. Let's see how this guy's doing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's really tempting to just grab this and throw it in the etching acid, but I would hate to have to go through this process again, even though there's only 10% chance that it'll fail right now. <laughs> I'd hate to have to go through that again. So I'm just going to wait. While we're still waiting for that, um, I'm going to grab a bucket of gasoline. And, whoops. <laughs> and put it in there. And then if we open up, we will see that it requires this much heat and pressure in order to produce LPG. Yay, we made it. Okay, so... Oh wow, it's really hot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we can actually turn that off. Let it cool down a little bit. So this is gonna get us LPG eventually. Oh, oh, we need to get pressure into this thing too. Oh, I forgot, okay. That's easy enough because we have pressure right inside that wall. So I'm just gonna put this lever over here. And I'm going to put a pressure tube right there. <clears throat> and there we go. Hooray! So now we're getting more LPG. And this is done. Oh my gosh, it is finally done. <laughs> and we'll get the next one started. We're going to have to do this four times. Maybe five. I, I seem to remember that there was some reason I had to do it five times. But So now we put that in the etching acid and it'll just sit there. Now as it says here, this item does not despawn, so we don't have to worry about that. And we can just let it sit there. As long as we want to, we can go eat supper or whatever, and when we come back, it should be done, <laughs> hopefully. Now, it does hurt to go in the etching acid, because it's, you know, acid. We can jump in there to get it. We'll take a little bit of damage. You could use a bucket to remove it if you wanted to, um, but it's easier just to jump, <laughs> jump in there, take a little bit of damage, depending on, you know, how much protection you have. And we can take a look and see where we're at. We're at 9%. It takes about five minutes. Okay, so there's another PCB ready. And we can throw that one in the etching acid. Oh, I'm hot. Huh. We can throw that one in the etching acid. And this one's done. Yay! Still doesn't do much by itself. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Because now we've got to take this and turn it into a printed circuit board, which is going to require transistors and capacitors, um, which are just stuff in the pressure chamber with plastic and such. So I have some LPG in here. Unfortunately, it's not an even bucket, but what I can do is I can put that in there. I can pull a bucket out and put that in there. And now I can't pull any more out, um, but I can use a pipette from Forestry to pull out those last 400 millibuckets and then throw those back in. So now all of that is over here. And we can make some more plastic. Remove the pa plastic mixer because heat was transferring into it. And it was causing this to not get hot enough. Um, but I'm putting it back <laughs> so it can pick up this liquid plastic. They do hold their inventory, the liquid inventory. In the next update, actually, it's going to also hold its dye inventory. It doesn't right now. So we just have to put more dyes back in there. We are going to need... 12 black plastic, compressed iron, and redstone, and then 12 cyan plastic with compressed iron and redstone. So 24 more compressed iron, 24 more redstone. Now we can start making a couple of these anyway, two of them. Uh, and we can start making our assembly machines. So in this case, we're going to need two of these assembly IOs. So we're going to need more plastic, more compressed iron. Oh my gosh, so much more compressed iron. Well, I thought we were ready. I have my four printed circuit boards. However, I just realized that we actually need seven. <laughs> so I've got another, another half hour of waiting because um, not only do we need to make the assembly, the necessary assembly machines, but we also have to make this assembly controller, which requires three printed circuits. So <laughs> I'm going to have to make three more of these. Our first PCB, and there's our three of them. Okay. All right. Now I'm good to go through this process all over again, but I'm going to do it off camera. Just for fun, I max this guy out. Let's see how fast this is. That, that, and then nine of these.
Oh, wow. Okay. It's pretty fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. I guess the only thing is we're probably losing pressure pretty quickly, but well, actually we're not really that bad. Nice. Look at that. So I've got two speed upgrades on the output, so that should be enough because, you know, there's more stuff going in than there is coming out. If anything should have a speed upgrade, it's this. Oh, it's sucking pressure like crazy. Oh, wow. But that's okay. It seems like we're keeping up. Oh, my God. Look at that. Okay. Nice. All right. This is good. So I can throw it all in the etching acid. Yeah. Oh, my God. Man, I wish I would have done this before. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that really sucks the pressure though, but that's okay. That's okay. And I'm just going to take this out of there because we should never actually have to use that UV light box ever again. Okay, so we're going to start making the assembly machines. I've got three more sitting in the etching acid. Um, they should be done fairly soon. Yeah, they're, well, they're a little more than half done, so a few minutes. Unfortunately, there's no speed upgrade to the etching acid. Um, but that's okay because this is the last time we will ever have to use that because from now on we will be creating those things in this assembly circuit that we are going to be making right now. First of all, when we look at a recipe, so let's say we look at the uses or we look at the recipe for this printed circuit board and we look at the unassembled PCB, and we're going to see the assembly controller requires certain machines for this particular recipe. So depending on the recipe that you're doing, it's going to require different machines. Um, Pretty much you're always going to need an assembly platform. You're always going to need an input and an output. So there's the assembly IO unit and you can set one to input, one to output. And then we're also going to need for this particular one, we're going to need a laser. And then we're going to need a um, program, assembly program laser, which we already bought from Amadron. But we also have to have the assembly controller. Of course, no matter what we do, we always need the assembly controller. So that's going to burn up three of our printed circuit boards right there. So the assembly controller is the thing, production line, that requires pressure. And it controls all of the other machines. And the, they get their pressure through this. And it always looks at us. Look at that. <laughs> it's so cute. It'll give us the status right there. It'll tell us what's going on. There is our laser. So we finally have everything. Hooray. Okay. And then actually we're going to need a couple inventories. I, I'm going to use these pots because why not? It'll look interesting. Okay, so everything in the system is going to revolve around the assembly platform. Um, this is where the item is going to get placed and it's going to be worked on. So that's where it's, things are going to be crafted, basically. Um, the laser needs to be adjacent to the assembly platform. The Actually, later on, we're going to make a drill as well. Uh, we're going to place that drill here because it also needs to be adjacent to the assembly platform. And the, the IO units do not. They can be diagonal from it. And that's what the, those look like. We're gonna take our pneumatic wrench and we're gonna turn one of these into an input and one into an output. So the one that we right click on, let's see which one, I guess it doesn't really matter. Is gonna turn blue, that's gonna be our input. And we're going to set a inventory next to it. And we're also gonna set an inventory next to that. This guy is ready to craft. So if we um, right click in here, we can see that of course we have upgrades, um, speed upgrades, which believe me, we are going to want them <laughs> as you will see shortly. Uh, although we're not gonna do those yet because it's kind of fun to watch it. And this is where we put the program. So remember we bought that program on Amadron earlier. This is the laser program. This is what we're going to need to make the um, pressure cables that we want to make. So this we put in there and now we ha it says no problems because it sees that we have all the machines we need for that particular program. And of course this program also tells us what, what we do. I don't know, one, two, two of these. Am I out of compre- I am out of freaking compressed iron again. How? So I'm just going to put these guys in this inventory. It should detect them. And there we go. <laughs> it's gonna reach in there. Actually, that's kind of why I wanted this pot because it looks, it doesn't look quite as bad as when it reaches into a chest. And then it brings it over and it puts it on this little platform. <laughs> dun, 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 very, very carefully. And then that picks it. 
or like clamps it in and then this is the laser it's going to come down and etch it so when you think about what's happening here is it's it's etching a circuit board into this thing which is exactly what we were doing with the etching acid except the difference is that so we're using two different methods to get the same result the first time we ha we put it in this light box that has that that PCB thing down there, that um, template, which causes it to get the uh, circuit pattern on it. And then we put it in the etching acid and it etches the circuit into it. Okay, so now we saw the slow process. I'm gonna dump the maximum in here. Oh, I only have five because I put some in the thing. Okay, so we're halfway there now. This is at five out of ten possible upgrades so it's already pretty fast actually yeah look at that nice yeah actually I had a bunch of speed upgrades but I put them in these guys in order to keep up with because I had both vortexes running at the same time so there we go there's our two unassembled PCBs okay I'm ready to make some pressure tubes uh, we need 20 pressure chamber valves Unfortunately, um, I was able to use some of our leftover pressure chamber walls to make the pressure chamber valves because if you put four of those together with a pressure tube, you get four. And then this recipe gets a 16, which gives us exactly 20. Um, 20 pressure chamber valves is going to get us eight <laughs> tubes. <laughs> so they're kind of expensive. So it must really compress them down or something that's cool nice all right so there is our adv eight advanced pressure tubes tearing it up Whew. we finally have everything we need for the flux capacitor nice again this was a lot of iron <laughs> needed some compressed iron and some iron for the gear of course the turbine rotor uh, required gold and redstone in the thing in the pressure chamber uh, and then we had these printed circuit boards, so it was, it was a lot of plastic and just a few odds and ends. The real expense was just the uh, infrastructure leading up to this it. This is the Flux Compressor. This is the RF-based compressor. It is advanced. I've got a advanced pressure tube in the back. I'm going to run a few more. I'm going to run one into this charging station. And then here, uh, we're going to switch to our low-pressure network. And we do have to be careful. We can't just directly connect to the low-pressure network or uh, we're going to put, pump too much pressure into this network. And there are a lot of things in this network, including the pressure chamber and this thing that has that cannot have handle more than five bar. In fact, I think this guy also, yeah. Although our vortexes can handle 20. So we're gonna kind of have two separate network networks running through the walls here, um, a high pressure and a low pressure. Um, but all of our pressure is gonna be generated by this air compressor. Um, so we're no longer gonna use the low pressure air compressor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this regulator tube module. That's the same thing that we used over here to turn off the pressure going into this vortex tube and over there as well, um, in order to turn this thing off when we're not processing oil. Um, so I'm gonna put this at the end of the tube and then um, we're going to give it a redstone signal. So over there, we were giving, giving it a full redstone signal to turn it off, but if we give it a partial redstone signal, it'll just change the amount of pressure that it allows through. So it's the same concept as the pressure valve that we used last time. Um, it starts at 7.5, and as we give it more redstone, it, each redstone power brings it down by a half a bar, so five will bring it down to five. So then we can put a low pressure tube. Oops. <clears throat> right there. So now what's going to happen is as the pressure builds up in this network, it's only going to allow up to five bar past here. So that means that these pipes are always going to have exactly five bar. In and them. we need to turn this off, of course, um, when it's when our pressure is high enough. So we're going to set this redstone behavior to only run when it has a signal. And then we're going to give this guy a signal when we need pressure in, in our system. So we're going to grab this pressure gauge over here. And we are going to put it over here. 
Um, now this pressure gauge has some limitations um, that are going to not work for us here. <laughs> so you may remember that this emits a redstone signal um, based on how much, how many bar of pressure we have, and it's a redstone signal per half a bar. So when we're at five, we're, it's outputting ten. When we're at ten, it's outputting twenty. Well, we can't, right? Because redstone only goes up to 15. Actually, if we grab our book and shift right click on this, we will see that we can apply an advanced PCB to the pressure gauge module. And the module will gain a GUI to provide more control over the redstone emission. So we're going to need to make an advanced PCB, which is this guy, um, which is going to require another one of these printed circuit boards. So it's a good thing that we have this nice <laughs> assembly system over here to help us with that. Well, I kind of ran out of pressure <laughs> while I was making stuff. I had to make more plastic, and we don't have any pressure going into the network right now. Um, and this guy, the PCB, got stuck. So it's in the process, uh, but it, the pressure dropped below its uh, thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this guy up. I've got it set to only run on a redstone signal, um, and I'm just going to use this lever, obviously, to uh, turn it on. So that and it's collecting RF right now and I'm just gonna turn it off and I'm gonna keep an eye on it and make sure that it doesn't reach 20 bar which I mean it'll take a while before it reaches 20 bar because it doesn't have any speed upgrades or anything right now but this one compressor is gonna produce more than all four of those did all the four that I had before so that's why we really only need this one. Now there is an issue with this one that we're going to be getting into is that when it's running for a while, it's going to get hot and we're going to have to find a way to dissipate that heat. And I've got a few tools down here <laughs> that we're going to be using in order to assist with that. So our pressure is going up right now. Um, it doesn't get too hot when there's no speed upgrades in it, but once we add speed upgrades, and I plan on adding lots of them. Um, it's going to start getting hot. So actually what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to make a heat sink. We're going to be making a lot of heat sinks eventually, actually. But for now, I'm just going to make the one. So our temperature, our temperature is still low. Once we reach this arrow, like if it's below that, we want it to be below this arrow. Once it reaches that arrow, the efficiency is going to start dropping. It's not going to like blow up or melt or anything like that, but it'll just be less efficient. Um, when it reaches this arrow, it is it reaches a point where it's so inefficient that it's just not doing anything. <laughs> like it's just burning power for nothing and just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So obviously we don't want that to happen. So I put that heat, heat sink up there. Um, and it'll absorb some of the heat. So the temperature will drop a little bit. Steal these. <clears throat> for now i'm gonna end up making a whole bunch more of these speed upgrades okay so now our pressure is going up uh oh our power isn't going to keep up at this rate though because now we're sucking 289 rf per tick but it's still our temperature is actually still doing pretty well now we're at 108 i think i think we can only do 256 rf per tick um with our current setup with the the lines that we have because we're at low voltage here so I'll have to get some higher voltage things in here. It's done. Okay, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna shut this down. Um, now you can see we have more than five bar over here now. Um, we only have 4.98 over here. So this is regulating it so that it only allows five bar over there. All right, so there's our PCB. And now we're gonna make an advanced PCB with that. Um, well, first we're going to make the printed circuit board and then the advanced PCB. So now we t take this guy and we right click on that and you can see it turned a slightly different color and some particles went. <laughs> so now we, what we want to do is we want to say when we have less than, let's say, 19.9, then we want to output a redstone signal. Actually, let's start with 19.8 just to make sure. So lower than 19.8, we're going to output a redstone signal. So right now, it is outputting a redstone signal. It says emitting redstone 15. Um, if we break this and stick a piece of redstone there, 
Um, actually, I don't know if that redstone's going to go into here. So I made some redstone paste from the redstone paste mod, which will allow us to do that. <laughs> so now we should be running. Um, I'm actually going to just do three of these right now. Um, I'm going to work on upgrading this network, and then I will come back, and we'll, we'll push this thing a little harder and see how hot it gets and what we can do to dissipate that heat a little bit. Um, in fact, I'm only going to bring this pressure, or this network up to 10 so that we have a little bit of room to play with when we get back. Oh, and by the way, there is an advanced config as well. So we could set it up to be similar to the way it was before, where it outputs a range of redstone based on where it is. So we can have a low, a lower bar and a higher bar. So, um, so the way that would work is that we could say that at maybe five, it outputs a redstone signal of zero. And then when it reaches 15 or maybe 20, then it's outputting a redstone sig a full redstone signal of 15. And we don't need that functionality. We just want the redstone to be on or off. So we're at 10 bar. And we are now not emitting a redstone signal. So everything is shut off. So the nice thing about this, as opposed to like the coal uh, generators, is that it'll stop instantly. So like as soon as we reach that bar, it'll stop. So you can see that we have exactly exactly 10 bar in this network and this guy too so we can go all the way up to 20 with this one although i'm going to set it to like 19.9 just to make sure um i am actually also going to stick a safety module in this one um oh i made one already or security module so what the security module does in here is it basically works like the safety module did where it'll release air um, however the safety modules only go up to seven and a half bar so this way it will release pressure if we get up to 20 bar so that way we don't have to worry about this machine blowing up like other things in our network might blow up but they probably won't because if this thing doesn't go over 20 bar nothing else will either. we are ready to roll so i've got some medium power going coming in here um i've got some speed upgrades actually let me steal let me steal all the speed upgrades <laughs> Um, I'm going to make more. I actually have a bunch of lubricant, but I'll make more soon, and then I'll fill everything up. But I just want to see. Um, now that, yeah, that's too much R per tick. So let's get up to about 1,000. Yeah, okay, so I guess we can do six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add... Oh, here. Volume upgrades. So that's going to bring our pressure down even more, which means it's going to run for even longer. So let me first set this. We want this to be 19.9. So now it's going to kick in. And then I'm going to add, where'd they go? Volume upgrades. So that brought our pressure down even more. So we now have a volume of 20,000 milliliters. Boy, that climbs fast. Look at that. And it isn't even all that hot. Okay, good, good. So that one heat sink is kind of helping, but it is increasing in heat. So we're definitely going to need more heat sinks. So now at this point, we've already started to reduce our efficiency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a block of compressed iron up here because compressed iron is a really good heat conductor that isn't going to cool it off in itself but it'll take on the same temperature and then we can add multiple heat sinks to it um, now do be careful uh, because the heat sinks when they're really hot like this one you can see it's glowing red they hurt <laughs> um, oh you know what this is too close to the wall back here so having a heat sink back here isn't going to help us Actually, if we stand on top of that, it's going to hurt us. Oh, it isn't. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Okay, so we're going up to almost 20. Oh, and we're releasing pressure. Why are we still putting the redstone signal here? Okay, so let's bring this down to 19.8. All right. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting that there was that much of a difference. I guess we, when it's heating up that fast... You end up with more pressure here than there. Okay. So now our temperature is cooling off. Now what's really cool about these heat sinks is with these, by using these blocks of compressed iron, um, we can br we can move the heat anywhere. 
and basically have as many of these heat sinks on as we want. Like we could have a huge tower of heat sinks and like we could have it going out the roof and everything or like out of the top of the building. You just have a big huge heat sink sticking on the top of the building if we ever really want to crank this thing up. And we'll be able to do a lot of pressure. So now um, what I'm really excited about today, this is kind of one of the things that I was building toward today, although um, we were also building toward some things that we're going to be doing in the next couple episodes, is so these tools that we made in the last episode. Um, we have this vortex cannon um, that blows things around. It blows mobs away from us. It uh, breaks grass, but it also throws us around. And <laughs> boy, it's big. When we fill this thing up all the way with pressure, Oh, it's taking a long time because I took the speed upgrades out. <laughs> there we go. So when we fill this thing up with pressure, um, <laughs> it's going to throw us a little bit further. So it'll be fun um, to see wh what happens here. And then I'm also going to fill our minigun up. The minigun will last a lot longer for us. All right, that is totally full. Stick the minigun in there. Um, and while that is going on... Uh, Let's see, how's my fall protection? Well, I have 20 hearts, so let's see how far this thing launches me now. Oh, crap. Okay, we got to get in front of that beam. There we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm glad I'm landing in the water because that would have been death. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, my God. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, that is uh, definitely more powerful when it has more air pressure. Okay, wow. <laughs> when nightfall comes, we're gonna play with this, and of course the minigun. Always has five bar now, that's awesome. And because we're using RF, we don't have to worry about filling this thing up, we're just always gonna have the pressure we need. That's pretty cool. And the only thing we really have to keep an eye on is the heat here. Um, and we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Like, we may end up having two or three more, um, like, blocks of heat sinks going on night is upon us fortunately it's not a full or it's not a new moon tonight so we'll actually be able to see oh my god <laughs> did you see that <laughs> wow they flung him really far and really fast it was like he just kind of disappeared oh come on man another ranger died what's wrong with my rangers oh oh okay the zombie killed the That's great. All right, let's play with the minigun now. Okay, nice. So that works about the same as it did before. Actually, I should add more speed upgrades to this. But it's going to last us a lot longer now. All right, we got through our whole list. <laughs> our etching acid, assembly machines, Avondron tablet, heat management, flux compressors, and tool power-up. So now we are ready to get into some more advanced stuff. In <laughs> now that we have the infrastructure, the advanced infrastructure, we can get into some more advanced and fun and powerful, crazy powerful stuff in, that this mod has to offer, including the logistics networks, the drones, the harvesting drones, the pneumatic armor, and then finally the programming drones. I actually decided to swap these two. Uh, we're going to do the pneumatic armor first because it will be useful when we're programming our drones. So I hope you had as much fun as I did with this. This was really enjoyable, um, even though it was it was a lot of work. If you do have any questions, comments, or ideas, or whatever, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or if there's anything I missed, or any corrections you want to make, you can leave those as well, or if you have any tips. And of course, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and to join me next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.